as they look for a CEO, are there big questions as to the direction that this business should take? Yeah, I, again, skipping the specific case here, because I, I don't want to get involved in it with them. Um, the, the, uh, when it comes to these type of situations, what I see happen is that the liquidity angle gets overreported. People will read things like the seven-year holding period and things like that. Look, we've had companies, we, we uh, funded financial engines back in 1996, and it didn't go public until 2010, and we're absolutely thrilled with the company. It's done great all along the way. Um, obviously, we love it when things go quickly, uh, but at the same time, we're here to try to build enduring companies. I know that's what the entire board is trying to do in their situation, to try to get that to happen. Um, yeah, I just think you run into these situations uh, where it's mostly about uh, a, a, a clash over control, and it's a clash over who's going to run the company. Oftentimes, but, what happens Paul, when people talk about venture capital is they say that the, you, know, you have one major decision to, ma to make as a venture capitalist on a board, which is who's going to be the CEO, who's going to run the company, and sometimes it comes down to that. You keep saying that this is common, and especially having a big investor clash with a founder. Have we ever seen, though, one board member outright sue another board member for fraud? You know, I, I'm not a, a historian on the law. I'm kind of a broader historian on the Valley, as you guys know. But uh, I can't remember a case like this. But that doesn't mean that it hasn't occurred over time. And, yeah. you know, I suspect there probably has been something, given that there literally have been hundreds of thousands of funded companies over the last 50 years. So. <laughs> yeah. it, it sometimes Fair. turns contentious. Paul, you were an early investor in Netflix. We've talked about it several times. It's been a big week for streaming and content news. Uh, with Disney's announcement, it would pull some movies and shows from the streaming service. We've had discussions here at this desk all week about what it means for Netflix, uh, how far along they are uh, in the race to make and withhold content for, their, for themselves. Did you see Disney as being existential? Uh, I don't think Netflix has any single existential threat, in my opinion. Um, they've done such a strong job, and as you'll recall, it was my partner Mike Shu that made the investment in Netflix back in 1999 on behalf of Foundation Capital. So we've been obviously very close to the company throughout, uh, and the management team there uh, and I worked together at our first startup, uh, Pure Software. But um, if I look at what's going on now, certainly. Uh, I don't. I haven't spoken to people at Netflix about this, but I'm, I'm sure they're not thrilled about the fact that a, that a big account, effectively like a, a Disney, wants to kind of go their own way. And yet, at the same time, I'm also reading that perhaps some of the major properties will actually stay on the Netflix platform for a while. I don't really know how that's going to shake out. But I think it's part of a much larger trend. That you're right, Carl. We've spoken about several times here. Uh, you know, four or five years ago, I had friends in media, and they were looking at Netflix as sort of like the greater fool. They said, wow, these guys are going around, they're buying all of our properties, they're spending all this money, this is great. Well, you know, there's no free lunch. At the end of the day, what Netflix was doing was pursuing a strategy of creating their own content. And now, of course, now that we've seen that strategy work out brilliantly. So uh, Disney is one of the latest. I don't, I've lost count. There must be 24 separate media properties that have started their own uh, approach uh, to an on-demand on uh, subscription service. Uh, I wish them luck. I wish all of them luck in terms of that. I wouldn't want to compete with Netflix uh, if, I, if, I, if I had any choice. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.